This is a period in which what we now recognise as autobiography is coming into being. And one of the presuppositions of autobiography is one of the changes in the period, the notion that subjective experience matters, that I matter, is new in the 17th century and it leads to an interest in personal experience, in subjectivity and to the beginning of a kind of life writing that will lead to autobiography. And the Reliquiae is one of the earliest and one of the most substantial examples of this, but it is also an example written by somebody who was a person of extraordinary, interesting, elusive and subtle character. So as an example of introspective, reflective and indeed in some senses meditative personal writing, it is of great interest and it has a significant role to play in the development of the genre of life writing. I think the uh, Reliquia Baxteriani never had great fortunes uh, as an example of the literary genre of autobiography. Um, so the term autobiography isn't used until the 1790s and when it is used uh, there's a, there tends to be a suggestion of something unrespectable about that. It's associated either with Jean-Jacques Rousseau's scandalous confessions or with, um, say, Methodist conversion narratives that are relatively basic in structure. Um, and the reliquia is much more sort of inimitable. But in the 1790s, so just after the French Revolution, uh, there is a resurgence of interest in Baxter, partly because people are comparing the experience of the French Revolution with the English Revolution back in the 17th century, of millenarian concerns and concerns about how to restore monarchy and, and good government in both cases. Autobiography was for a long time considered a kind of uh, unrespectable genre. It's narcissistic and why would anyone spend so much time talking about themselves? Uh, when in the 1960s or so onwards, um, theorists like Philippe Lejeune um, uh, rehabilitated the study of autobiography as, as um, something that, that it was reasonable to do alongside study, studies of the novel. They really emphasised individualism. So Rousseau whose Confessions were, first part was, was published in 1782, was the great example, uh, not belonging to any group, telling Lejeune's definition of autobiography was a, a retrospective first-person narration, telling the story of a personality. Um, so the study of autobiography was rehabilitated on that basis. That definition wouldn't apply very well to Baxter. Um, and, and I think it, it's a, a much more sort of recent phenomenon that that studies of autobiography are, are rightly getting broader and considering how identity is not just individual, but also corporate. So George Fox and the Quakers, Baxter and his group, um, and, uh, and even those sometimes despised kind of Methodist conversions form a group together and, and, and networks. Uh, so I don't think those were particularly influenced by Baxter, but they can be studied in a, in, in perhaps in a comparable frame.